click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this video we will discuss about the various types of loop. Now why we use loop? We use loop to execute some part of code or you can say some part of statement for more than one times in a program. In the previous video we already took one example in that example what we uh, did suppose if I want to print my name for more than one times in a program then what I will use I will use loop okay so there are three types of loop basically for loop while loop and do while loop three types of loop they have the similar functionality means all these three loops are used to execute a some part of statement more than one time in a program only the way of writing each loop or the way of representation of loop is different means the purpose of using the loop is same only the way of writing is what different so let us study each loop in detail So first we will start with the for loop, giving heading loops, so there are three types for, while, do while. So let us start with the syntax of for loop, so I will write here syntax for first we called it as what initialization semicolon then we check condition semicolon then we increment bracket close open bracket close code and then close bracket so this is the syntax of for loop for again is a keyword in the bracket we first write initialization condition and then increment and in between everything we write our code so what is initialization initialization is basically a initial value of your variable condition means how many times you will be executing a loop suppose if i am printing my name for 100 times then my condition should be what it should be less than equal to 100 i mean my counter or my variable should be less than equal to 100 so i will be like you know executing the loop for how many times 100 times and increment increment is like you know every time we at every iteration we increment the value of variable by one or two or so on okay it's not like always increment we may decrement the value of variable also so we use either increment or, or decrement any operator we use and these operators we have studied like you know when we studied the operator at that time we have discussed the operator that is plus plus operator and minus minus operator plus plus is called as increment operator whereas minus minus is called as decrement operator so we may use a, we may use any one of these operator like increment operator or decrement operator okay so this is how the syntax of loop but you won't understand the syntax of loop like you know without example so let us take one example and with the help of example we will understand how actually my loop works now suppose my same example if I am printing my name for say 10 times in a program then how will I write a program I will start with two header files hash include void main integer now I am taking one counter and that counter is i. So counter is basically used to count how many times you are incrementing or how many times you are executing a loop. So I took a counter and that counter is what i. Now in this program what I am doing is yes I am printing my name for 1 to 10 times. Okay so I will write for i is equal to what will be initial value of i obviously it is going to be a 1. So I will write i is equal to 1 semicolon i is less than equal to 10 so initially your i is 1 and you have to keep on incrementing your i till your i becomes what 10 so i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to 10 and every iteration you will keep on incrementing the value of i by 1 after that open bracket in between open and close bracket what we do we write a code so how my code is going to be a c out you are just printing your name so you will write only c out insertion operator <coughs> then Ikeda double quotes complete endel now if you'll forget to write endel then what will happen yes this Ikeda will get printed in the same line for 10 times okay but if you don't want to 
print the e keyed on the same line you write endl so that the output will get printed on the separate lines then close bracket get ch and then close my main function ka bracket okay now let us see how actually a loop executes here it will go inside the function of the body and your compiler will see yes you have taken one variable that variable is what i now your compiler will enter inside the for loop in the for loop it will check i is equal to 1 so initial value of i is what 1 then it will check whether 1 is less than equal to 10 yes my 1 is obviously it is less than equal to 10 then it will go inside the body and it will print e keda on your screen so you will get the output as e keda and after that i plus plus so i plus plus means what your i ka value will get incremented by 1 so now my i ka value will be what 2 so one more time it will check 2 is less than equal to 10 obviously again 2 is less than equal to 10 so one more time it will print what e keda now your i will become 3 again 3 is less than equal to 10 again it will print e keda so it will keep on doing these things till your i ka value becomes what 10. So it means your e keda will get printed for how many times on the screen? Yes, it will get printed for 10 times on the screen. So you keep on doing that and at the 10th iteration, again one more time you will get e keda. After 10th iteration, now my i ka value will become what? 11. So my 11 is not less than equal to 10. So 11 is not less than equal to 10 means what? Your loop will get terminated here and your um, compiler will come out of the loop and you will get e keda printed for how many times? 10 times on the screen. So this is how the execution of the program using for loop happens. What? How exactly it happens? It goes inside the loop and it checks at it every iteration it checks the condition if the condition is true then it executes this part of loop if the condition is not true then it comes out of the loop so this is how my for loop gets executed now suppose instead of printing your name if you want to print 1 to 10 numbers then how will you do that yes very simple only instead of e keda what you will write here i but that i won't come inside the double quotes if you'll write i inside the double quotes then that i will get printed for 10 times so you don't have to quote your i inside the double quotes you will just write c out i so that i ka value will get printed for how many times 10 times on the screen now in the next example we will see how to calculate sum of 1 to 5 numbers of oh, sum of 1 to 5 numbers means what actually it is basically a 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so again what you are doing here you are repeatedly doing the sum of what 1 to 5 numbers like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so again you will put that part inside what loop now we'll see how to do that now i'm giving the heading 1 to 5 numbers sum okay so yeah you start with the header files int now i need one counter which will basically count how many times you are performing sum then you are printing a sum so you need one more variable and that variable is going to be what yes sum so I'll write here sum semicolon now you are printing a sum of how many numbers one to five numbers so it will be for i is equal to one i is less than equal to five i plus plus now how actually my sum will get calculated now see before calculating the sum of some number when we initialize sum it is good programming practice to initialize your sum as zero if you don't do it so then what may happen now it may take a garbage value so you may get any random answer so it is good programming practice to initialize your sum as what zero so i'm initializing my sum somewhere here you can write like this sum is equal to zero so you're initializing your sum as zero at the beginning of the iteration now see here what you are doing exactly is 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus, 5 you are doing. So how it will happen now? Initially your sum is 0. So what you will do? You will add 0 plus 1 and that is going to be a 1. So this is my sum now and my i will become 2. So what you will do? Now your sum is 1 and your i is 2. So 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. Now your sum is 3 and your i has become what? 3. So 3 plus 3 is going to be what? 6. Now your sum is 6 and i has become 4. So 6 plus 4 is 10. 
Now your sum is 10 and your i has become 5. So 10 plus 5 is 15. So this is how we perform what? Sum repeatedly. So when we do this, I mean when we perform sum repeatedly, we use a formula and that formula is what? Sum is equal to actually what we were doing here. We were adding sum inside i. So my formula is sum is equal to sum plus i close bracket. And then I will write C out. Sum is equal to sum gate ch bracket close. So how my execution will happen here? Now my initial value of sum is 0 and my i is 1. So I will check whether i is less than or equal to 5. Yes, my i is less than or equal to 5. It is 1. So what I will do? I will, I will write here. So my first iteration is going to be sum plus i. My sum is 0. So 0 plus i is 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Now my i will get incremented by 1 and it will become 2. So again sum is equal to sum plus i. 2 is less than 5. So next iteration my sum is 1 and i is 2. So it is going to be a 3. Now my sum has become 3 and i will also become 3. 3 is less than or equal to 5. So one more time it will do 3 plus 3. 6. One more time it will get incremented by 1. So here i will become 4 and my sum is 6. So 6 plus 4 is going to be a 10. Now one more time you will increment the value of i and now it will become what 5. So 5 is equal to 5. So at this iteration your sum is 10 plus 5. So it will become 15. Now one more time your i ka value will get incremented and it will become 6. So your condition will get false and you will come out of the loop and you will get print 15 printed on your screen. So this is how my loop works. This is how my for loop works. Now next we have to study how to uh, use while loop and how to use do while loop. So let us start with the while loop first. Syntax. First I do initialization, then basically I check condition, so while, then I write my code and then I perform increment, then my bracket is closed. So if you will see the syntax of while loop, it is same as for loop. But only the thing in the for loop is what I had written all three conditions like initialization, condition and increment inside the one bracket. But in the while loop what I did, I wrote all these three statements separately. Like first I did the initialization, then I checked the condition and then I have to increment the variable. So this incrementing ka part exactly comes inside the loop and initialization comes outside the loop. So this is the syntax of while loop. Again the working of while loop is same as for loop only as, as I said the syntax is different. So let us write one program uh, the same program in the program uh, we had printed our name for 10 times but in this program we will print 1 to 10 numbers and we'll see how to do that exactly. So again I'll start with two basic uh, your header files. I. Now initialization comes outside the while loop. So you can write i is equal to 1. Then while i is less than or equal to 5. What you are doing exactly? You are printing 1 or 2, 5 numbers. So it is going to be 1, uh, sorry, c out insertion operator i indel. And then every iteration you have to increment the value of i and then get ch okay so see this example this is the same as for loop but instead like you know in the for loop what i did i i did the initialization condition and increment inside the same bracket here i have just split up them first my initialization will come then my condition and then my incrementation okay so what i'm doing exactly here i'm printing the 1 to 10 number so how it will get printed it will see i is equal to 1 1 is less than or equal to 5 so it will print i i means what 1 then your i ka value will get incremented by 1 and it will become 2 so again it will check 2 is less than or equal to 5 yes so it will print 2 
again it will get incremented by 1 now it will become 3 it will check whether 3 is less than equal to 5 yes it will print 3 then it will become 4 and at the end it will become 5 but when it will become 6 my condition will get false and you will come out of the bracket and you I mean you will come out of the loop and you will get 5 numbers printed on the screen so this is how my while loop works now we'll see the syntax of do while loop so in the do while loop what we do again we do initialization then do we execute the code we increment the value and then we check the condition now see here one more thing in the for and while we don't give the semicolon at the end of the loop but in case of do while we give semicolon at the end of the while so your while should get ended with the semicolon so this is how my syntax of do while loop is so what actually here we do here we take one more iteration than the while and for loop because what we do here basically we first try to execute the code and then we check the condition so like you know this is called as what this is exit control loop exit control loop means what at the time of exit what we do we check the condition whether it is true or not but in the case of file loop we called it as entry control loop why it is entry control loop because when we enter inside the loop at that time only we check the condition whether my condition is getting satisfied or not so that is the basically a difference between what while loop and do while loop in the while loop like you know at the time of um, entering inside the loop only we check the condition but in the case of do while loop uh, when we come out of the loop we check the condition so do while loop actually take one more iteration than what uh, while loop and uh, for loop so this was about the loop we use three loops that is for loop while loop and do while loop the purpose of all these three loops are same we execute some part of code repeatedly in the program or multiple times in the program but only the way of writing a uh, program or the syntax of every loop you can say is different in for loop we write all three statements together and those all three statements get separated by semicolon that is very important thing in the for loop all your statements get separated by semicolon uh, we'll have a, a syntax of while loop again so in the for loop what we do we write all three statements together and all those three statements are separated by what semicolon in the while loop what we do instead of writing the statements together we just split them up first we do initialization then we check condition and then we do incrementation and in the do while loop what we do like you know first we initialize then we check the like you know then we try to execute the loop and at the end we check the condition so this was about the three types of loop in the next session we will see some examples on this loops so thanks for watching this video for the latest video please subscribe the channel ikeda